Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Cinema 4D Basics Tutorials. Um, in this thrilling episode we'll be covering the object buffer which is nested under the compositing tag in Cinema 4D. And what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to export files from Cinema 4D um, with kind of pre-baked uh, clipping masks so that when you go into Photoshop to cut them out you don't have to spend ages just clip clip clipping around them with the mouse. You can just go into your channels and they'll just be there preset. So without further ado let's jump into Cinema 4D and see what we can see. Um, okay so the first things first we'll need some objects to isolate. So here's the cube, one of them, one of them and we'll just stick a floor on there uh, which is here and let's move these cubes up because the floor is already at level zero and the next thing we want to do is we want to stick some compositing tags on these cubes here. So where were my other under they're under render tags? Uh, compositing. And okay, so what we'll do is we'll apply a separate channel to each one. So in this one, I will just call this cube two just for the sake of being able to identify it in relation to the object buffer. So cube one can have a channel of one and cube two can have a channel of two. You can have them both to one and that will mean it will have the same, it will have a clipping mask applied to both simultaneously. Doing it this way allows you to have two separate clipping masks. So, you know, depending on your needs, you can obviously, um, you can obviously kind of tailor it to, to what your project needs are. So the next thing we need to do is going to render settings and make sure our object buffers are Enabled. So multi-pass is just there by default, whether it's checked or unchecked in the default settings, you need to have it checked. And then we right click on the multi-pass and we will add an object buffer. Now we need to do that twice because we've got two objects that we want to buffer. If we had them all under channel one, you'd only need one channel. Hopefully that makes sense. So object buffer one is a group ID of one. And to make this one correlate to this one, we'll just change the group ID to two because you see under here, it's got its buffer ID of two. Sorry, is this in group ID? Yeah, because it's, it's, it's group ID and buffer ID, same thing, kind of. Um, so basically, we'll pop back out here. We need to obviously make sure that we've saved as a PSD or a PNG. I tend to work with PSDs because uh, with when you start to mess around with the compositing tag in Cinema 4D, what can happen is um, if you save it as a PNG, sometimes entire parts of it are missing if you've kind of um, hidden them using these object buffer techniques. Um, so just for the sake of keeping it, um, keeping all your data safe, I would just use a PSD. Uh, make sure the alpha channel is checked. And let's go out and we will go into our view and let's just render this out. So here we go. Uh, we just go to, I was just rehearsing this, remove this one. Uh, so we're not going to use that, that's from earlier. And obviously we want to have a a sky object because we haven't rendered anything. You see, that's what can happen. So let's just render that. Well, see, the reason we need a sky object is because we have global illumination checked, um, which gives us the nice kind of lighting. But obviously, um, if it doesn't have anything to bounce the light off of internally, it won't render. Well, I mean, it'll render, but you just won't see anything. Um, so here we go. Here's our cubes, and we should have our object buffers here and here. So let's just save this down as our PSD, and we'll jump into Photoshop. And I will show you how to activate the um, the channels so that you can extract your visual. So let's just jump on into here and um, Photoshop. Boom. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. And uh, we need to obviously make sure the background layer is um, unlocked, because otherwise we won't be able to access our alpha channel. And uh, the alpha channel is just the transparency. But if it's on a locked layer, it'll just give you a white or whatever. Whatever this background color is, it'll just convert it to that. So you don't really want that. I mean, you might. But I mean, I don't think you probably need it. So um, object buffer one, object buffer two. Um, one of the limitations of the object buffer is that you can see here where the object buffer one is slightly cut out of... Uh, so object buffer, yeah, object buffer two is slightly cutting in. It's almost like you use the Pathfinder in, in Illustrator, if you ever use that, it's kind of, um, you can't really do anything about that. It won't render you a layered PSD per se. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind if you need to render multiple objects. So you'll need to make sure they're not overlapping as far as the perspective is concerned. 
So let's just, um, if we just uh, command click on these, you can see it's creating our clipping masks for us. Like I said before, it's kind of like, just to save you to have to do it manually. Um, it's a very useful tool. Um, obviously this quick mask mode is because we have the object buffers visual, visualized with the eyes here, the little um, things you can turn on and off. Now if we turn that off, it'll just give us the clipping mask that we want. And so here you go. And yeah, so basically if you wanted to um, copy those to another layer, you could do that. Uh, copy, paste. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. Copy paste, and we'll turn that off. And and there you go. That's that's basically it. Or if if you wanted to as well, you could uh, inverse the selection, and then you have your your objects isolated. Um, real quick, real easy, and um, super. It can save you a ton of labor if your if your if your objects are kind of complicated and and have loads of kind of curves and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I'll catch you up in the next tutorial and good luck with your creative journey. All the best. Bye-bye.